This is Red Wizard 52, and this is a new relaxing let's play of Rimworld. Uh, this is a um, very interesting uh, sim game. It's um, I like how they have a kind of marked it as a story generator rather than a game. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite games of all times. Um, honestly, the reason why I started doing let's plays was because I watched so many people uh, playing Rimworld. Uh, during the pandemic and it inspired me so um, and I, I've done a couple of these myself but um, it was one of the first let's plays I did and um, you know they weren't very good but um, I'm, I'm ready to return to this game this this is this is just and there have been a lot of uh, uh, DLCs to come out since um, I first was in, in, into this game there was um royalty DLC which uh, brings in a whole like cast system element and uh, brings in a new faction called the Broken Empire. There is the um, a really cool uh, ideology um, DLC, and this uh, not only um, allows you to, uh, you know, the, the the previous game allows you to have this community, but um, the ideology expansion actually allows you to kind of shape their beliefs and uh, their religion and this and that. You can create, uh, you know, um, political parties, cults, all sorts of craziness, and then. Uh, this uh, most recent one, I think it's a you know um, maybe nine months old. I think it came out last March. Um, don't quote me on that. Is a it's called a biotech, and it allows you to genetically engineer your uh, um, your pawns, basically your characters that you create. So you can you can create other species and interact with other species, and it's really cool. So we're gonna do all three DLCs and just try to um, see if we can keep. All the, you know, the plates spinning. There's so much content when you have all three DLCs going. So we'll see. It's 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 really a dynamic game. So um, I've thought up a whole scenario and stuff that I want to play through, and it's going to be the rich um, explorer scenario. So um, basically, uh, you play a single. You start off with a single pawn, a single character, and this character they have um, well, they have a little bit of advanced technology. Uh, they have electricity. They can do generators. They, they're not super advanced, but they come prepared. And um, here you can see everything that you start with: two thousand silver. That's the currency. Gold. That's basically that's a building material for like advanced electronics. You come. You start with forty packaged survival meals. That's that's pretty good. Forty days of meals. Um, Thirty glitter world medicine. Glitter world is like an extremely advanced tech technological uh, society. Thirty of those. That's that's, that's pretty good. Um, 30 components, that's for building like advanced electronic stuff. Charge rifle, a very powerful early game weapon. The random pet, it's pretty cool. Everybody gets a random pet. The only thing I have to worry about the pet is I don't want this pet eating my survival meals. Steel, 450 for building stuff, and 300 wood. So, um, uh, the, uh, you, you choose an AI storyteller. And um, it's basically like if you're familiar with Dungeons & Dragons, this is like your... You're a dungeon master, if you will. And um, there's three options. Uh, Cassandra Classic. Uh, Cassandra basically provides you with events and crisis situations. Uh, commensurate with your power. So as you gain power, Cassandra starts to, uh, you know, challenge you. Um, just just slightly above your power level, so it's exciting. And then you have um, Phoebe Chillax. And uh, she basically takes it easy on you. Um, it's... There are going to be some crises just to keep things spiced up, but mostly it's a building game at this point. But then uh, the one I like to play with is Randy Random. Um, it says here, Randy doesn't follow rules. He'll generate random events and doesn't care if they make a story of triumph or utter hopelessness. It's all drama to him. So, um, yeah, you never know what you're going to get with Randy. You could get like three months of, you know, peace and prosperity, and then he dumps like a you know, basically a, um, you know, uh, pirate attack that there's no way you could defend against it and they destroy everything. So it's really a compelling um, game when, when you put up, uh, when, when you use Randy Random. So we're going to go with him. And in terms of difficulty, um, I think I'm going to do Strive to Survive. It says, uh, experienced players who want a rough story requiring skill to survive. I could do Adventure Story. It says experienced strategy gamers on their first game of RimWorld, but I play this game a lot to where I think Strive to Survive is the appropriate 
when you get it in the blood and dust, um, it's it can get really brutal. And I want this to last um, somewhat long. Um, it's you know New Year's Day when I'm recording this. I'm actually kind of interested in the idea of of doing this um, interspersed throughout the year. See how far I can get you know in a single year. Um, most of these I do like ten episodes, but um, this is the kind of game that you can just keep going and going. And uh, I, the scenario I have uh, planned out for this Let's Play, I think is pretty cool. I'll get to that in a second. So we'll go with um, Strive to Survive Randy Random. Oops, and then uh, we'll say um, Reload Anytime Mode or Commitment Mode. Um, when I play by myself, I do Commitment Mode because basically you can't leave without saving. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to commit to this commitment mode. I'm not going to change anything. You just have to trust me. Um, but I'm going to do re reloading time just in case there's a bug and um, I lose a bunch of content. So um, it would be a shame if I do commitment mode, doing this let's play, and then I'm you know, playing for a long time and there's a bug and my game crashes and then I have to completely end it. So I'm going to go reload any time just because it's a let's play. But I once again, I will be playing it as if it's commitment mode. Anything that happens, happens, and there's no going back. So let's just randomize the seed. Well, I don't like that. Gore. Helplessness, no. I want a positive word. What's our first positive word? Let's see. Come on. Partners. Partners. Let's do that. Partners. Okay. So we'll say global coverage, 50%. Uh, Overall rainfall, normal. Overall temperature, normal. Population, normal. Pollution, five. Um, these factions uh, take a lot of um, explanation. Basically, you have a technology level. Um, they can be like, you know, tribal. Right here, see this gentle tribe, meaning they have all pre-modern technology, like spears and bows and stuff. And, you know, um, basically, you know, they eat things like pemmican, like a, like a you know survival berry meat paste, um, or you can have um, these uh, kind of 20th century technology or, or late 20th century technology, um, machine guns, um, electricity, you know, uh, you know wood burning stoves, that sort of thing, um, or you can have uh, the Shattered Empire, right? And the Shattered Empire actually has advanced technology. They show up with like marine armor and they have psychic abilities and they are, you know, super advanced. You know, um, they have cybernetic stuff installed, uh, and um, but you can have people like pirates, who they have all different technology levels. You know, they, you know, s some of them might have swords. Uh, you know, some pirates invading might have a sword in their hand. Or other pirate might have a machine gun. And then there are, um, you know, now with this uh, um, biotech expansion, there are different different um, races. So you have pig people. <laughs> You have impids, are basically like little devils. You have um, the Itikin. I'm not completely sure who the Itikin are. Uh, actually, the races all change um, with each game. Everything in this game is algorithmically generated. Um, you have normal humans. Humans in this are called baseliners. Right? Um, so you can see this Civil Outlander Union. If you look at the bottom here, it says member xenotypes. 85% are baseliner, meaning 85% are unaugmented, genetically unaugmented humans. And then 5% of our Hussar, Dirt Mold, Genie, and Neanderthal. We don't really know what those are, but um, you get you, you get an idea. There's basically... Oh, and I didn't mention um, their uh, kind of relationship to you. So some tribes are ex just kind of by default hostile, like pirates are always hostile. Some um, oh, mechanoid hives are like evil robots. They're obviously always hostile. So are insects. They're always hostile. But some places are neutral, like the Shattered Empire is neutral. You can develop a relationship with them. The Gentle Tribe, I think they're neutral towards you. Um, I think the Civil Outlander Union is actually like inclined towards you, but don't quote me on that. But anyhow, these are the different factions. So we're going to keep those factions. Let's go and generate us a world. It's really cool, um, the world generation process. I have no mods going, by the way. And I, I might uh, download some mods just any mod I use will be quality of life mod, you know, um, this display, this and that. So let's see here. I want to find a place. Who, where are my factions? Um, they have a lot of weird names. 
So I want to be near the neutral people. So the Finn Hatum Covenant in the Olmea League in the Exodus Empire. So once again, the purple houses, the yellow uh, teepees, I guess is what those are, and then the um, Empire. I'm seeing over here two uh, civil outlander unions and one tribe. See, is this is this temperate? Yeah, temperate. The empire is somewhat far away, but Matro. But um, I think I'm okay with that. What's this area called? The Ithnara Peaks. I like that. Let's see. And this is a river. It's always nice to have a river. Temperate forest. I like that. Granite, slate, and marble. I like that. And there are caves here. If you look, it's um, 47 degrees Fahrenheit is the lowest, and 89 is the highest. This is a really good place. I like that. And then, and, and the marble is going to be really useful, and there's berries here. So, yes, this is our site. And we're close to a lot of settlements. We're going to have to deal with... Um, what's this faction? The Fierce Neanderthal tribe. And we're gonna have some inputs coming, but um, yeah, I want to make sure I, I click on the right one. I lost it. Here we go. Okay, I like this. So we're staying right here. So we're going to do a fluid. So an ideologian. So what should your starting columns believe? These beliefs affect gameplay and visuals. You'll be able to recruit others to your beliefs or take on uh, their beliefs. So the um. The ideology, the ideology religion, is going to be a big part of this playthrough. So we're going to be, um, so we're going to be custom. So that means I have to start with a simple, um, a meme, and I'll show you what that is. We're going to, we're going to be embodied theist, but the gods walk the planes like us. Yet they are powerful and immortal, as we are not. They decide the moral structure of the universe. This is but mo mostly just um, aesthetics, like how your buildings look, but also, um, you have to pick your, uh, your meme. And we're going to do transhumanists. Human progress means merging with technology. So my rich explorer, whoever I end up um, choosing, I haven't chosen my starting colonist yet, um, he or she is going to want to turn themselves into a god, a synthetic god. That's, that's, that's the goal. So this is a rich explorer. They um, were on a glitter world, like an extremely advanced planet. And they um, were looking around and they were seeing, you know, these synthetic gods effectively, in essence, basically people who had like, you know, used so much cyber technology and uh, biotechnology and psychic um, training to turn themselves into like gods and that our rich explorer wants to become one themselves. So what this means is it changes how your um, pawns um, behave and what they want and you know, so for example, if you look at required precepts, it says sleep accelerator preferred, neural supercharge preferred, biosculpting accelerated, age reversal demanded, eating nutrient paste, don't mind, body modification approved. So we'll start there. Um, what this means will actually come into clearer focus the more we play, but we are transhumanists. And that, it will change as we um, proceed. So I actually have a narrative um, prepared for us. So I'm going to go to my screen and copy it. Um, okay, hopefully you don't see the um, changing windows. So here's our narrative. Uh, looks like we're going to have to pick a name. I had a name um, uh, decided it was going to be Lucius um, because that just sounded like, you know, a... Um, uh, extremely uh, rich um, computer scientist engineer psychic who would want to turn themselves into a um, you know synthetic god so we'll go with Lucius because I, I I forgot that you don't pick your character until after you create your religion so Lucius was a prodigious hacker and software engineer on a glitter world a planet at the pinnacle of technological advancement known for his unparalleled skills in digital manipulation and cyber warfare Lucius oh I kept it in there was not just a master of technology, but also a philosopher, deeply intrigued by the concept of transhumanism. 
I'm going to do the double dash. Evolution of humans through advanced technology. In the elite circles of the glitter world, and I'm going to change this to Lucius. Observe the rise of synthetic gods, individuals who have transformed themselves into quasi-immortal entities through extreme bioengineering and cybernetic enhancement. These godlike figures were revered but also feared as they ruthlessly quashed any potential rivals to protect their domains. Here I'm going to space down. Hopefully this is exciting stuff. So um, let's go back here. Lucius, ambitious and visionary, saw the limitations and the hubris of these synthetic gods. He believed that true transcendence wasn't just about personal immortality or supreme power, but about reshaping civilization itself. However, his growing prominence and unorthodox views made him a target of the jealous gods of his world. Um, oops, do I, run out of, did I run out of space? No, okay. To escape their surveillance and potential wrath, Lucius liquidated his vast fortune and invested in a cutting edge spacecraft designed for a one way journey to the furthest reaches of known space. His destination, a remote rim world, untamed and ripe for the sowing of a new vision. So that's our. That's our narrative. And um, we'll s call it, uh, you know what? His last name is going to be Voltor. I had it planned, but I um, I didn't know. So, And we're going to call this um, Voltorism, right? And um, the adjective will be, uh, let's see, um, Voltoric. And the member now will be a Voltorian. And the ritual room will be, um, ritual room will be the Pantheon's fine. I like that because he actually is, I'm going to use this symbol because it's kind of human and technology. And I want it to be dark red. I think that's cool. Actually, that's kind of cooler. I like that. I like the triangle there. Yeah. Okay. And um, Volterism. Okay. So uh, I actually have two gods planned too, because we picked the um, embodied uh, theist um, meme, and so it's, it always gives you deities. But the two gods are going to be. Let me um, check my notes here. Um, let's see. Here we go. This is uh, Technion, and it's Technion, the Forger of Futures. That's pretty cool. That will be our goddess. And then we'll have, um, as our god, will be... Sorry, I'm just grabbing my notes. Harmonix, the harmonizer of systems. Pretty cool. So these are more allegorical. Um, the Volterans know that they are, uh, you know, that gods are just beings who have transcended. Um, and so they don't really believe in anything other than like, you know, Technion was psychically gifted, had a whole bunch of cybernetic technology installed, and maybe edited their genes and had gene therapy to the point where they became larger than life. I mean, they know these two gods aren't necessarily real, but they pay homage to them. Maybe maybe Technion and Harmonix um, were friends of uh, Lucius Voltor when he was on the Glitter World. So body modification, they really want to have their bodies modified. Age reversal, they really want to be immortal. Bioscopting, um, you know, obviously, I'm not really sure what bioscopting is just yet. Um, I think that's um, gene editing. They want their genes edited. Neural supercharge, not really sure what that is. We'll see. Sleep accelerator, okay. Um, I like this, like, um, let's see what the stuff they don't like. Um, oh, you know what? I didn't realize I can add a deity because I had four deities planned. I want one more deity. One more deity because I had um, uh, Biosim, the Weaver of Life. Sorry to jump around. 
but I'm but this this first episode you got to get you got to get things um, uh, correct right biosim the weaver of life and I don't know why it's useful to have um, all these different deities but it'll just be cool maybe we can build like altars to them it'll um, and we can come up with stories for you know you know technion so the reason why I wanted these three so body technology harmonics right oh that makes sense they're like the you know um, if we're if we believe in uh, transhumanism then we, we want to believe in technology we want to believe in the human body and we want to believe in harmony between the two I've, I've, pro I've clearly overthought this so uh, so execution we don't like executing horrible people I mean if it's horrible if we execute innocent people I like that slavery we don't like slaves um, female clothing pants and shirt that's fine uh, male clothing pants okay organ harvest uh, we do not harvest people's organs I don't know I mean I'd say that's acceptable why wouldn't organ harvesting be acceptable where did that go it makes sense to me that we would accept organ harvesting because we would see the human body as like you know meat to be used I don't know is that weird I don't know we'll see um, corpses ugly fungus despised I guess you only can like eating fungus if you're um, a tunneler you know there's a meme called you, people who live underground diversity of thought neutral hmm I don't like that. I'm going to say they're going to have um, moderate bigotry. So that means that they don't like people of different ideologies in their group. So we're going to try to convert people into Volterism when they join. I really have this idea of it being kind of like a, a, a cult. Insect meat despised, that's fine. Physical love, spouse only. Mm -hmm. What's this? Free and approved. We're um we're beyond such taboos in this uh, society. Um, let's see. Yeah, I know that's. Uh, I can't imagine transhumanists still worrying about, you know, um, what am I trying to say? Um, maintaining um, monogamy. If I don't know if that makes sense. Um, maybe maybe they would. Maybe they are the jealous type. But um, so uh. Let's see. Scarification, horrible. Skull spike, disapproved. Uh, eating nutrient paste, don't mind. We are perfectly okay with, you know, um, synthetic food. Research, normal. Scarification, horrible. We don't want to scar ourselves up. Skull spike, d disapproved. We're not going to spike our enemy skulls. Organ use, acceptable. Marriage, name, random. Eh. Keep names. We keep our names. Men, spouses. Men may have one spouse only. Women spouses one only. That's fine. So I actually have three roles. Um, let me check my notes. My roles are uh, okay. The f the leader is going to be called the visionary. This is the person who. Um, and I don't like these slice caps, so I'm going to remove that. You can say that. Um, the leaders have to have certain clothing. I guess we can add a garment. Let's see. How about um, I don't know. No, I don't like these things. So we don't we don't need a garment for the leader. So um, the leader is the visionary. The moral guide will be called. Got to check my notes. The moral guide is called. Um, Let's see. The sage. Actually, do I have a god up here? I can. I'm gonna. I'm gonna call the um, the moral guide the because we worship harmonics, right? So we're gonna call the um, moral guide the uh, the harmonics sage. I don't want a burqa. That's not, not not cool with that. We'll just say, yeah, they don't need any garments either. The harmonic sage, 
And then the research specialist. The research specialist will be. Hmm. The. The Herald of um, Technion, I guess. Well, Technion would just be the technology, right? We'll say the Herald of Harmonix. I like that. Harmonix is really important because, you know, you don't want to have, because the research, you're going to be researching biotech and you're going to be researching actual tech. So if I was to make this um, like the the herald of Biosim or the herald of Technion, it would it would, it would be inappropriate. So um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so so let's see here. Okay, rituals, the funeral. What would the the funeral be called? It would be very cynical. I think they would it, they would they would be very cynical about death. So. Um, uh, Let's see. What are some random technology, industrial, torque, burial, requiem. We'll just call it the requiem. All right. Requiem. Eh. We're going to be just very memorial service. Because for these people, in the Voltarians, um, is that what I'm calling them? Let me go back up. The Voltarians. For the Voltarians, if you die, you 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 haven't made it through. It's really sad. So um, the social festival. We'll say this is the advent of the advent of of Voltor. Or how about um? We'll just call it the Epiphany. Of Voltor, it commemorates um, on the first of April May uh, the um, the moment when Voltor realized he needed to leave. He needed to leave his uh, glitter world. So our buildings will have. Um, what, what can we? I think we should have pe we should have pews or should we have kneel seats? I like kneel seats. You know, they're more like yeah, building Volteric shrine. Okay, I like that. Volteric Shrine is cool. Volteric Altar. Volteric Shrine. I like the Volteric Shrine. Building? What's this? Machine statue? Form? Machine carving? Um, hmm. I don't know. I don't even know what this is. I guess it's something to, that, that we decorate with. Uh, the harmony. I don't know. I don't like that machine form. I don't know what that is. I guess that's something a person-sized piece of material sculpted into an artistic form. Let's just call it something really generic. The harmonious form. It's some sort of artistic modernist work of art that maybe it's a you know some sort of sculpture that that Lucius Voltor has like uh, imagined for his people to uh, you know it's like symbolizes his ideas. Our relics, let's see, the ancient weapon of kings. The longsword can be used for slashing and stabbing. The Laco Corpus. Eh. You know, I don't like this. Because we're, we wouldn't be, I mean, we will end up using swords, but I want it to be like more uh, technologically advanced. So let's say, um, let's say plasma sword, persona plasma sword. I like that. Silent smasher. So um, what is a persona plasma sword? This weapon has an onboard persona that can bond only to a single person. The wielder and the intelligent weapon can synchronize their reflexes and attack with frightening speed. Once bonded to a wielder, the weapon's persona will refuse to be wielded by anyone else. So let's let's randomize its name. 
Gnar. I like that. That's a relic. We'll have to come up with a reason why Gnar is venerated by... By the way, you don't start with your relic. You have to find it on your Rimworld. And we'll do another relic. It'll have to be a... Um, let's see. What's a cool... What's an arc? Cube? Hmm. What's a cube? I can't, oh, I'm sorry. Um, an object with ideological significance. Okay. Techno cube, machine cube. I don't know. Hex focus. Bore light. Cube of life. Life crux. Cube of creation. Zon loop. Cube of silicon. I like that. That's pretty interesting. Cube of silicon. Oh, I have a good idea. We'll do another cube. And we'll try to make it out of something that is organic. Yeah, that's what we'll do. So, cube of carbon. How cool is that? So we have a cube of silicon and a cube of carbon. Carbon and silicon. Flesh and technology. I don't know if this makes sense to you. It makes sense to me. So these are two relics that we're going to have to find. Venerated animals. Do we venerate any animals? I don't know. Maybe the rat? Because we use them to... Yeah. Let's venerate rats. Can you even... Tame rats? I think you can. Yeah, let's venerate a rat because they're like lab rats, right? We're, we're scientists. I know that's weird, but preferred apparel, I really don't like these slice caps. They look very emo. So let's remove those. Are there any cool, you know, um, it's a torture crown. That's creepy. Um, maybe we just have like a, like a took, like a, like basically a, um, a hat. I mean, like a beanie. That will keep us all... Well, no, if we do that, then they won't be able to wear um, helmets and stuff. That's okay. We don't we don't need them to wear certain things. Um, appearance, hair, tattoos are fine. But we're fine. So this is it. This is... This is... This is Volterism. Took a long time, but we have a... We have a religion. Okay. So we have to find Lucius Voltor now. So let's see. I want Lucius Voltor to have really good construction and really, really good. Um, let's see what else. Maybe intellectual because we need to have a. He's coming here to research, right? So construct. We need construction because he's by himself. He's gonna have to build everything by himself. And then we need intellectual because he need, he's he's a researcher. Actually, I would hope that he would have two two um like a passion for being a researcher. So I might just keep randomizing until I see the passion down there. So I don't like any of these people. So I'm just gonna keep clicking this until I see somebody. Construct this one. No, no, don't like that. This might take a while. We only get one person. Okay, so this person might be Lucius Vols Voltor. Yeah. Eight intellectual. They have a passion for intellectual and six construction. The cooking's fine because we're going to be eating nutrient paste. Schoolyard Outcast. Here, let's change his name to... Um, Lucius, how do I how do I erase Zachary? Oh gosh! All right, Lucius Voltor, and we'll say L Lucius. Okay, there you go. So, um, schoolyard outcast. Uh, Lucius had a modest but 
proper upbringing, despite a good family background and plenty of support, he struggled to make friends and was often bullied. He learned and worked to play alone and avoided socializing to avoid conflict. So he's melee plus two, plus two artistic, minus three social, plus two intellectual. That's fine. So theater technician. Lucius spent countless hours behind the scenes of a famous theater. He built scenery, programmed lights, and monitored the machines that moved the sets. Off duty, he would talk with the cast members. Navigating the social drama of the actors helped him to learn how to communicate well and manipulate others. Okay, so I like this. So the theater technician, I know it says theater, but really what's going on with Lucius is he was a technician for one of those synthetic gods I was talking about. I don't know if that makes sense. He helped the household of one of these synthetic gods, and he, um, he was there, and he watched, and he learned. So that's what this tech theater technician is. So he wanted to become one himself. So here's our visionary. He's 70, so um, he's, he's up there. We've got to watch out for him. He can't die. I mean, he, will, he, he, he might die. You never know, but um, he's, important to, uh, he's important to us. We need to um, we need to get him immortal as soon as possible. Like age, um, hope he doesn't st start suffering from age-related things. So um, that's 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 definitely a risk. So there's Lucius Voltor. We, we very well might be starting a cult where the um, where Voltor will become apotheosized, turned into a uh, you know a mythical figure soon. But he's starting it. So that's that's our guy. He's really good at melee. He can s sword people. Maybe he knows about Nar, that sword, N-A-A-R. Um, he's good at construction. He's good at plants. Well, not too good at plants, but sufficient. Animals, okay. Hopefully they start us with a rat, because we venerate rats. All right, so I'm going to play for a little bit, but I think that maybe this episode has, has uh, gone on long enough. But let's see. The neuro simulations, hollow games, and free orgies were never enough for you. You wanted more, the grit and consequence of real life. Uh, like they talk about in the history books, you wanted to know what real challenge and consequences feel like. Now, after a journey of decades in crypto sleep, you're landing on this unknown room world. Real consequences await you. All right. I'm gonna pause. Oh, and of course, we started with a rat. Sinbad the rat, awesome. Okay, so let's zoom out and see how we're doing. Nice. Okay, these caves have some bugs in them. Gotta watch out for these bugs here. Those will kill me right away. Got this river. River, you know, um, river flowing through. This This might be a good place to start and just kind of carve this thing out. Um, I don't want to move far because that's a prop that that's that's a waste of time. So maybe I'll just build a structure in here. That's what I'm going to do. This will be our structure right here. So I don't think I'm a very good miner. Let's see. Mining, I suck. So I'm not going to do that. Um, all right, I have an idea. So, first off, I'm going to allow. Where's allow? Allow. I'm allowing all of this. It's been disallowed, so I, he, he, can, he can mess with all of that stuff. Actually, I need to allow all of this. So, structure. Let's start with wood, because I want to use our metal just yet. Let's do... This is good, a good space back here. So, I wonder if he can build a wall over, I mean, a ceiling over top of all of this. We'll see. Um, so, we'll do there and there and a door. And then we'll do a wooden wall. We're going to eventually mine out this metal. And then we'll do a wooden door 
here. And hopefully all of this becomes covered with a uh, ceiling. We'll see. Okay, Lucius, what are you doing? He's wondering. Oh, and I, you know what? I didn't even look at his, he's misogynist. He, um, that's um, kind of appropriate for a guy who has created a cult for his, you know, um, based on his name. And he only believes in it 62%. And then he's abrasive. So he's, um, he always says exactly what's on his mind, especially if it's bugging him. So he's, yeah, this, I feel like this is totally the appropriate thing for uh, Lucius. We, we need to get him to equip this charge rifle, even though he's not going to shoot anything with it. And, yeah, and I think these things are going to start deteriorating in the river if we don't watch out. So I'm going to do this zone, stockpile zone. I'm going to say stockpile. That's a stockpile. And we're just going to say uh, critical. So he puts everything in there. So we're going to watch him. Once we get him uh, in some shelter, then we'll be fine. What's he doing? Okay. All right, Lucius. You're on this strange planet by yourself. We need to get this stuff equipped. This stuff should not have been dropped in the freaking, uh, you know, Cut this tree down, it's going to take him a while. Sinbad. I like that name. If anybody wants me to change the name to something else. I hope the squirrel doesn't fight with uh, Sinbad. Sinbad, though? You see, you notice, so he's... um. Now putting up roofs over all this stuff. It's cool. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna speed this up. So we have roofs on this whole area. Is this cool? So all of this is now enclosed. We have a good structure. Alright, so now he's gonna take everything and store it. Awesome. And you know what? Before anything, I want you to equip. Lucius, I need you to equip this charge rifle. And I need you to haul all of this stuff. Because it can't just lay it in the river. So it's going to take a while, but just to get everything put away. It's eating a little meal. Got our gold. This is very defensible. What? Going for a walk? No, 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 Lucius, stop. It's not time for a walk. Let's go into, let's get all this stuff out of the river. Need to work hard. You can, uh, some people don't believe in micromanaging your um, characters all that much. I, I try to, limit that as well set them you know but um sometimes you got to get them to do things so oh, he's gonna have to build a bed too he's gonna sleep on the floor he's gonna be very angry okay so i'm gonna stop him okay no don't do that yet we're going to say furniture wooden bed build one right there Then I'll have somewhere to sleep. That's cool. See, so yeah, I think we're pretty we're pretty good. I'm gonna um So I'm gonna have to set up a, a power source and then I'm gonna set up two auto guns because he's horrible at shooting. I mean look at that. Shooting zero. If if like a mad squirrel comes, and it will come, we will get a mad squirrel, he's just gonna run inside and lock the door because um, we won't be able to shoot it very well, even though he has like, I don't even know what a charge rifle is. Let's see, what is a charge rifle? Pulse charge technology charges each shot with unstable energy 
as it leaves the barrel. So, so it's pretty um, it's pretty intense. You know, he has that he's not gonna be able to hurt anything. So um, we're getting our stuff inside. We're gonna have to have some electricity. We're gonna have to um, put up some defenses, and then we're we'll be cooking with uh, cooking with what is that term? Cooking with gas? Yeah, don't be cooking with gas. Oh, we need to actually create a um, animal sleeping spot. We'll have we'll have Sinbad the rat sleep at the foot of um, Lucius's bed. So, all right. Well, that was episode one, and hopefully this journey of Lucius Voltor and his um, vision of um, apotheosis through transhumanism will come to fruition. Thank you very much, and have a good day.